Hello, in this video we're going to talk about how to draw force vector diagrams, how to resolve force vector diagrams and how to work out some resultant forces. So just to make sure that we understand firstly what a force vector diagram is, we can represent the forces acting on an object using a scale diagram. So as you can see from this diagram on the right, there's a 100 newton force acting upwards on an object and a 50 newton force acting to the right and we can draw those arrows to scale so in the top right hand corner you can see i've got a scale of one centimeter is equal to 20 newtons and i could work out how long each of these arrows needs to be to represent those forces accurately so i could use a ruler and on the ruler you can see that that force arrow is five centimeters long because five centimeters using my scale every centimeter being 20 newtons gets me to a force of a hundred newtons however sometimes forces don't act at right angles like the first example that we looked at so we're going to practice drawing some vector diagrams for forces at different angles other than 90 degrees to the horizontal so we're going to have a look at an example of a question and have a go at it. It says a force of 200 newtons acts at an angle of 20 degrees from the horizontal. And we have to draw a scale diagram of that force. And there's a little example of what that should look like. So it's 200 newtons going to the left and it's 20 degrees above the horizontal. So there's several steps that we need to go through to be able to draw this diagram. The first step is to pick a scale for the diagram. Now you need to make sure your diagram's reasonably big. If you pick a really small scale, say one centimeter to 200 newtons, then you're not going to pick up the marks for a question like this. It needs to be an appropriate scale just like we would with a graph. Um, so the scale I'm going to use is one centimeter to 10 newtons because when we work that out my 200 newton line is going to need to be 20 centimeters long and that should fit nicely on my piece of paper. The next step is to draw your starting point. So I'm going to draw my starting point down in the bottom right hand corner because I know my force arrow is going to go upwards to the left. Um, so I've thought very carefully about where I draw that line to make sure I leave myself enough room to draw my arrow. Uh, the next part is to use a protractor to draw the correct length of line at the correct angle. So I'm going to put my protractor on the piece of paper and I'm going to measure 20 degrees. And at 20 degrees, I'll draw a little dot so I know where my force arrow has to go through. Take my protractor away and then from my starting point, I'm going to draw a 20 centimeter long line using a ruler going through the little dot, which represents my 20 degree angle and then draw my line in and then take my ruler away and that line needs to be labeled as 200 newtons and i could draw the angle in if i wanted to as well you could do this on plain paper or you could use graph paper quite often it's easier to do on graph paper because the horizontal line is already drawn for you so that makes it a little bit easier to see where the straight is here are three different examples for you to have a go at. Each example has got a little diagram underneath to represent what it should look like when you're done. Um, you need to draw the force at the angles stated in the question. So if you want to pause the video here, leave this up on your screen and have a go at those three questions. So here's an example for us to look at. We've got a force of 200 newtons acting upwards on an object, along with a force of 400 newtons going to the right. We have to work out what the overall resultant force acting on the object is. You can probably work out that it's gonna be sort of upwards to the right, combining those two forces together, probably more towards the right than upwards, um, because the force to the right is bigger. 
So if we were to draw in sort of a, a guess of what that force might look like on this diagram, you'd probably expect it to look something like that. So our steps to try and do this, to work out the size of this force and its angle, are to pick a scale for our diagram, then to draw my starting point just as I did before and use my ruler and protractor to measure the size of the force and find its angle. So the scale I'm going to pick this time is 1 centimeter to 20 newtons because I'm going to draw a 400 newton force. That's quite large, so I need a suitable scale to fit that onto my piece of paper. Um, and I've drawn my horizontal line and my starting point in. This time my starting point is off to the left because my forces are going up to the right, so I've left myself enough space to draw them. Then using my scale, I'm going to work out how large these lines are going to be. So I'm going to draw in a 200 Newton force going up using my scale. That's going to be 10 centimeters long. One centimeter is 20 Newtons. And then my 400 Newton line to the right is going to be 20 centimeters long. Again, using my scale. So I'm going to draw a 200 Newton force upwards and a 400 Newton force to the right. So I'll use my ruler to make sure I draw these really accurately to get them exactly the right length from my starting point. To work out the overall resultant force, which is going to be up to the right, what I'm going to do is draw a dotted line um, parallel to my horizontal line at the bottom across from the top of this force to the right. So I'll draw a little dotted line going across. Again, this is going to be slightly easier if we use graph paper, but not impossible if we're using plain paper. Um, and then I'm going to do exactly the same sort of thing, going from the end of this force vertically upwards. Where these two dotted lines meet is where the end of my resultant force will be. And it's going to be up from my starting point to the right. So I can draw that in using a ruler. What I can then do, using my ruler again, is measure the size of that force. So measure its length in centimetres and then convert that using my scale into a size of force. And I can also work out the angle that this force acts on using my protractor to measure the angle. So that looks like it's about 25 degrees. So what we'd like you to do now is practice with three examples. So these are three examples. You're going to need to initially draw the two forces shown to scale on your paper, do your dotted lines going across, and then find your resultant force for each. So the first one is going to be up to the right. The second example, the force is going to be down to the left. And in this example, this is quite tricky, you might have to simplify two of these forces first to then work out your resultant force. OK, we'll give you a little bit of time to have a go at doing that. So pause the video and try the questions. So we'll go through answers to the first question. The first thing to do is to pick a scale and the scale I'm going to pick is one centimetre. It's going to be equal to 10 newtons. That'll give me a nice big diagram that'll fill my piece of paper. You can pick a different scale, though. That's absolutely fine. Um, that means my first line of 150 newtons is going to be 15 centimetres long and my second line of 40 newtons will be 4 centimetres long. So I'll need to draw a, a starting point down in the bottom left because I know my arrows are going to the right and up, making sure that I leave enough space for me to draw my line on. My first line is going to be 15 centimetres long, so I'm going to draw that from my dot up to the end of my ruler, putting an arrow to represent direction, and I should also label that with 150 newtons like that. And then I'm going to draw a force to the right. This is going to be four centimeters long to represent my 40 newton line. And I should also label that as well. To find the resultant force, I know it's going to be sort of upwards to the right. I need to know where it finishes. And to work that out, what I do is draw a dotted line from the top of this arrow um, going out of at right angles, just like this force, so parallel to the one down here. Uh, so I'll draw a little dotted line. The graph paper obviously helps at this point as well. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing going up from the end of this arrow. Little dotted line. Do quite wide dots. There we go. 
Let's have a look at so I know that my force is going to finish here. So I can get my ruler and I can draw my line in to represent that force being as accurate and as careful as I possibly can so it finishes exactly where those two lines meet. And I should then draw a nice clear arrowhead so the direction is obvious from what I have done. Okay. What I then need to do is work out the size of this force. To do that, I'm going to use my scale. So I need to measure my force arrow. I don't need to put my ruler on. Measure that to be 15.2, uh, sorry, 15.7 centimeters. And then that doesn't tell me the size of the force, that tells me the length of my line. To work out the size of the force, I'm going to need to use my scale. So every centimetre is 10 newtons. That's a nice and easy scale to work things out on. So that's 157 newtons of force. The final thing I need to do is measure the angle. Now I can choose to measure either this angle or the angle below. Uh, that doesn't matter a huge amount as long as I mark it clearly on my diagram. So I'm going to put my protractor on and I can then measure my angle to be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 and a half degrees of a nice precise protractor. So 15.5 degrees. OK, brilliant. Hopefully you've had enough time to have a go at doing those examples. If not, pause it for a little bit longer. What we've just done is taken two forces to work out the overall resultant force. What we're going to do now is kind of go backwards. Take the overall resultant force and try and split it back into two component parts. So let's have a look at an example. So, for instance, we might have a force acting at an angle. What we would need to be able to do is turn this into a horizontal component and a vertical component. And you might be able to kind of work out how we might do that using a similar method to the one that we've just looked at. So split it into those two component parts. Here's an example for us to have a look at. So you've got a force of 500 newtons to the right acting at an angle of 40 degrees from the horizontal. There's a little picture there to help you work out what this should look like. You need to turn this single resultant force into a horizontal component and a vertical component. So the first step is going to be to draw this resultant force as a scale diagram on our piece of paper then we can split it into its two parts. So my first step is to pick my scale, then I'm going to do my starting point and use my protractor and ruler to draw the line in appropriately as we've done previously. Um, so the scale I'm going to use this time is slightly larger, one centimetre to 50 newtons to be able to fit that onto my piece of paper. So my 500 newton force is going to be 10 centimetres long. Um, my starting point this time is to the left because my diagram is going up to the right. So I put my protractor on, mark my 40 degree angle with a little dot so I know where to draw my line and then I'm going to do a 10 centimetre line going up through 40 degrees representing my force. And that force is going to be 500 newtons so I've put a little label on. We need to split this into a horizontal component and a vertical component. So what we're going to do again with some dotted lines is mark a vertical line from the top of the force down to the horizontal. This should be meeting perfectly at a right angle. So you might use your uh, protractor to check that. Again, graph paper would make that slightly easier to do. And the same thing, a horizontal dotted line going across. You might be able to work out how we're going to find these horizontal and vertical components. The horizontal force and the vertical force go from the dot outwards. So we're going to mark those in. And then we're going to need to find their size. Now to find their size, I'm going to need to measure them with a ruler and then use my scale to convert that into a number of newtons. 
So you've got two examples to have a go at. For each example, you're going to need to draw it out to scale on your piece of paper first. So draw your horizontal line, the force at the correct angle, all to scale. And then you'll be able to split it into a horizontal and vertical component. OK, so have a go. Pause the video and try those two questions. All right, so we'll go through the answer to the first question just to make sure that you understand how to do these. And then I'll leave you to do the second one. So the first step, as always, is to pick a scale. Um, and we always try and make our scale as simple as possible to make our calculations a little bit easier. So I'm going to say that 10 newtons is a centimetre, or I can write that the other way around if I want to. And my first step then is to draw out the diagram um, that is on the screen. So I'm going to draw my starting point down here in the bottom left because I know my force is going up to the right and I'll just draw a dotted horizontal line in as well and then I am drawing at a 45 degree angle my force I need to put my protractor on my starting point and measure round to 45 degrees draw a little dot there so I know where my angle is going to go and then using my ruler and my scale, I can draw in my 150 Newton line, which I know is going to be 15 centimetres. I then need to split this force into its two component parts, so a horizontal component and a vertical component. To do that, I'm going to need to draw some dotted lines. Again, the graph paper is a real help here. Okay. And then to mark in my forces, I'm going to use a different colour for you, so hopefully you can see that. Uh, the horizontal force is from the starting point to where this dotted line crosses the horizontal down here, and so I can draw that in. And make sure I put an arrowhead to show direction because forces are vectors. The length of that line is 10.7 centimetres. Let us mark on 10.7 centimetres. Remember my scale is 1 centimetre is 10 newtons, so I can simply multiply that by 10 to get 107 newtons. Then I can do the same thing for my vertical force. So I have got 10.7 again and 107 newtons. Now each of those answers will be allowed a little bit of tolerance in the exam. Depending on how accurately you've drawn your diagram, you might have a slight deviation from these. Um, but as long as they're within an acceptable tolerance, those answers would be absolutely fine. So hopefully you've managed to work out what those diagrams should look like and have got them drawn out on your paper. Thank you for watching.